but... What's going on, everybody? David Kurz here with another segment of The Real Talk Show. So we're coming to you live with Mr. Michael Lafito, who is a staple in our industry, uh, industry leader, uh, listing uh, specialist, certification giver. I'm going to say no. I don't want to say giver. Giver, awarder, giver of the giving hand. Right. <laughs> content provider. Raising the content bar. Content provider. Raising the bar and your level in the industry. Uh, for all of you that keep talking about how do I raise my price point, uh, I don't want to sell more houses. I want to sell more expensive houses. Work smarter, um, not harder. Yeah, right. This is the guy that you want to talk to. So we're going to spend some time talking to Michael right now, and you'll be able to catch him at the Real Talk Conference, too, in Miami, Florida, in October. I think you're going on on the 10th, right? You asked yeah, well, for the 10th? Yeah, the first day. The first day. He's yep. on on the first day. So, <laughs> so we'll see you guys there. Make sure you buy your tickets at realtalkcon.com. So let's talk, Mike, man. So luxury specialist. Luxury specialist. Uh, listing luxury specialist certification is what you specialize in. Yeah. And you run a team as well, right? So we run a small team based in the Chicagoland uh, market, and then we help other agents and teams and brokerages land more luxury listings in their given market. So that's crazy to me, right? Because I, I, I know a lot of agents that do luxury, um, and they're not out there trying to give away their secrets. Right. You know, so many agents have a <laughs> scarcity mindset, right. right? So, I mean, we got this beautiful setting. We got planes, trains, and automobiles going over <laughs> us. We're here in Coronado, uh, the De Hotel Del Coronado, and they got the military base around here. But uh, probably you know, a military chopper passing by right was. now. And there'll probably be others. But, you know, so many real estate agents, I feel like, have a scarcity mindset. And uh, I'm all about uh, raising the bar and uh, leading with a giving hand. And I'm a big believer in karma, and if you do enough good things, good things will happen well, exactly. back, you know. I believe in, in uh, giving back to our own community. I think, I think it's selfish of us, and it is irresponsible of us if we do well and not share how we did well with the rest of the market. Because I always believe there's plenty of food out there for everybody. There really is. There, there, there really is. And we're, you know, we go to these national conferences, you and I, and we've seen each other just like we did here. And... You know, disruption is a big word, disruptor, disruption. And then you hear all these new companies coming in, and a lot of people talk about how commissions, if anything, are not going to be going up. They're going to be going down because of these flat fee companies, et cetera. So if an agent doesn't do a good enough job marketing any home, let alone a luxury home, what happens? Right. The consumer has a bad experience. And when they have a bad experience, then they go to a discount brokerage because they don't see the value. So I'm all about raising the bar for the industry to protect the consumers, which helps protect the agent and keeps fees, right? Agents deserve the fees that they, you know, that they bring to the table. I always tell that to the agents. Say, stop dropping your fee. You work for it. You work for it, right? And, unfortunately, and I said, listen, I, you know, go to a doctor's appointment, yeah. right? Try to negotiate and then, and, and, there, right? And negotiate your fee. Yeah. Say, hey, I need elbow surgery. Right. I know you're asking 10 right. grand. Well, why don't we do five grand, right? right. I'm going to have to cut you in the knees. Down south, doc's going to say, get Get out of my office, right? No, you're right? Absolutely right. But, but here's my thing. Why can the doctor say, get out of my office, and the realtor is so quick to say, sure, I'll do it? Yeah. Well, the doctor, um, obviously, if, especially if they're a specialist, you're going to pay their rate because you have that broken ankle and you're a marathon runner and you want the best working on you. So selling a luxury home or any home, for that matter, shouldn't be any different. So unfortunately, though, is when most agents go up in average listing price, many agents compete by lowering their fee, and it really shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that way. And, and I think uh, you gave the answer exactly what I was looking for, which was if you're a specialist in that area, people are willing to pay for it, right? And yeah. so what I find is, and, and you said something on, on the stage. I, I was there for your, for your presentation, which was fantastic, by yeah. the way. Thank you. And, um, and, and one of the things that you said resonated which, with me, which was, um, wealthy people with high-end properties would sometimes even be borderline disgusted with the fact They'll that you were so quick off. to drop your, turned off. your commission. Uh, I mean, they pay more for their dining experience, for their right. hotel and resort that they stay at, their, you know, for their clothing line. I mean, the, the they name, expect more. They expect more. The name of the book isn't luxury listing generalist. It's specialist, right? right? So there's an old adage, specialists get paid. Excuse me, generalists get paid, specialists get wealthy. So, 
you know, you want to be a specialist with your niche marketing. Now, you could do niche marketing for certain neighborhoods, and that marketing piece that just goes there only talks about the Farnham neighborhood, and this is, you know, the Muirfield neighborhood. But, but if you have marketing pieces that say, hey, we specialize in this, 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 you're a generalist. Right. So you really want to position yourself as a leading authority, as an expert, as a specialist. You also said something, uh, I'll give a big shout out to uh, one of my buddies in Miami. He, he, you can find him on Instagram, he's the Indian realtor. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. You know who he is? Oh, yeah, I'm it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm it. Yeah, oh, yeah. he's fantastic. Great guy. Yeah. I spoke to him, I, we went out, grabbed a cup of coffee, and one of the things he said to me, I asked him, I said, you know, I like to pick people's brains. Mm -hmm. How did you get into the luxury side of things, right? Because mm -hmm. you don't just wake up one morning and end up in the luxury side. Sure. And he said to me, he said, I sold whatever I needed to sell, but I didn't project that to the public, right? Which, you know, basically meant if there was a $200,000 listing, that's what he was selling to make the money he needed to make to promote and market higher-end properties. Sure. And he said he, every Wednesday, he would go to the broker's opens because that's when our broker opens are over there in Miami, right? Yeah. And every Wednesday, he would go to the broker opens, and then he would uh, do live feeds from different homes. And he would basically say, this home's available in Miami, blah, blah, blah. This house is listed for $4.5 million or $10 million or whatever the sure. case is. And, and he did that so often and so much that people recognized him for that. And you said something on the stage yeah. about that. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, I congratulated him on that. I said, man, that's pretty slick. And I remember telling him, I, made, I had a hiccup in my career. I made the mistake of promoting luxury so well that some of my friends and clients who had lower end properties yeah. did not call me, yeah. right? And that's, by the way, that's going to happen. That, that, that and, certainly and, might happen. Yeah, you know? and you're, and you, but you have to learn how to get past that. My mistake was I didn't get past it. I got nervous, mm -hmm. right? I got nervous sure. because I was living off of my average price point, which was about 350 yeah. at the time. And, and I wanted to progress and do some higher end properties. And so that's what I promoted at a very high level. And if there's something that I'm good at, it's marketing and branding. And we, we pushed that out at high level. And then people said to me, oh, man, I, you know, hey, I just bought a house. What, what do you mean you just bought a house? Why didn't you call me? Uh, well, you know, I know you don't work in my market. You know, it was only $280,000. Right. And, and in my brain, I was like, man, I could have yeah. used that commission. You well, know? that's frustrating. So one of the things that we tell agents is, you know, especially if you're trying to position yourself as a luxury specialist, is yeah, have your success stories, your case studies on the luxury, but when you sell a cute and small or an entry level or an average price property, make sure you do a video on that. Uh, so I'm a big believer, and at the end of my trainings and my videos when I'm putting out content, I say, hey, don't forget we sell cute and small, so if you know of anybody that's got an entry level home or an average price property, we have specialists on our team that can take care of them. So. Again, you could delegate right. to team members that are newer agents or more entry-level specialists. And this is perfect for yes. those of you that are trying to build those teams and asking yourself, how do I feed my team? Yeah, how do you feed your team? You have specialists on your team. There's one agent that I had on our podcast out of Toronto, and they're a melting pot up in Toronto, just like Miami. Yeah. They're international, different languages. So he had specialists that really spoke different languages. So. You know, when they put, when they tagged their listings, you know, they did them in different languages. And that, that, that specialist for, you know, whether it be a Indian buyer or, you know, somebody from Chinese, China, Chinese yeah. buyer, whatever, they would have their marketing collateral in a different language. Ready to go. That's fantastic. I think uh, uh, in Miami, we have a very heavy uh, Latin market, a very Spanish market. Yeah. And um, I don't often find real estate agents doing their marketing materials and propaganda in both English and Spanish. They often do it just in English or just in Spanish, which I think is a mistake, yeah, right? If you know agree. you're selling a home in a high-end area that is attractive to, to, to Latinos, then you should do it in English and Spanish because just because it's attractive to Latinos doesn't yeah. mean it's just going to be a Latino that shops no, in that neighborhood. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And so I, my Spanish is pretty bad. I'm un poco, right? Yeah. So, but I would bring on a specialist. Um, you know, I don't sell so you too go much to, now. You can go to Fiverr, right? You, you can, can go, go to Fiverr, Fiverr and have that translated. Radio, I, had an entire, I had an entire independent contractor agreement translated in Spanish on Fiverr. It cost me 20 bucks. It's insane, yeah, it really right? Is. It's it really insane. Is. There's really no reason why you there can't isn't. do that. There isn't. So if you were to give any tip to to the agents that are watching this right now and thinking to themselves, yeah, guys, man, that's all good and dandy, but, uh, you know, I, I, 
I live in Miami or I live in Arizona or I live in California and the luxury side is so saturated with the people that have been doing it forever. There's no way for me to break in. Yeah. What would you say to that person? I see a golden opportunity there, uh, especially if that market is, if anything, a neutral market or might be a buyer's market. It's much easier to get people's attention because why the heck am I going to hire that traditional agent when we know things aren't selling? I want that new cutting edge agent that's aggressive, thinks outside the box. I think it's easier to stand out and be that newcomer in that neutral to buyer's market. If the market's hot and luxury multi-million dollar properties are selling multiple offers, then it's a little bit more difficult, right. but you can still go after that. So right. it's really about the mindset. I'm a big believer if you grow your knowledge, your confidence will grow. And so most agents are comfortable inside their little comfort zone. Mm -hmm. You got to really step out of the comfort zone because that's where the magic happens. Yeah, man, I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in that. If you're comfortable, which a lot of agents get comfortable, yeah. You can slip up at so many levels, man. I talk about this all the time. You guys have seen me talk about it. I mean, I'm talking about you do everything right and necessary for three months, and it generates you two months of closings, but you get comfortable in those closings, and you forget to do the things that got you to that point, so then you have three dry months. And that's why most agents don't have consistency in their businesses. And he just said it right now it matters in the luxury side it matters in the not luxury side it yeah. matters in the FHA side it matters in the veteran side it matters in any side that you specialize in mm -hmm. and guys we do this special for you because we want those of you who want to be listing luxury specialists to reach out to Mike mm -hmm. and be able to do these things with with him and his service and his certification and everything and I think that that's uh, that's where it's at, you know, that's where it's at, learning how to do more. And this is not for everybody. Maybe it's not for you and you know it. That's fine. Focus on what you're passionate about. Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, my focus for always has always been an average price point of 400000 And my veteran was my best friend. My teacher was my best friend. My police officer, my firefighter was my best friend because I had a passion for it because it's a world that I come from. Mm -hmm. And I had no problem with that. And right, affinity, and I had right? I've had plenty of my own luxury listings, left and right, from five million to six million to we had uh, a close call for twenty million. You know, I've we've sold two, five, one. You know, we've we've done all of that. But man, my bread and butter has always been that hero that mm -hmm. I consider that mm -hmm. hero, mm -hmm. and and in that price point where a v, VA loan can cover in that mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know, all. shoot, I mean, it's 20, 20 million, 30 about, million dollars in sales like that. You know, when, when you're passionate about something, it's not work, right? Right. I mean, if, if you jump out of bed, you're excited when you have passion. So I tell agents all the time, like if you were to win the lottery, you know, and you talk to your financial advisors, I talk to you about diversify your portfolio, right? right? Yeah. You have some low risk, some high risk, long term, short term. So think about the properties you represent. And many times agents have entry level and average, but add start adding some of those high end and those luxury buckets. Yeah, you don't have to give up the. You don't entry have to level give up everything average, else. Spread things out a little bit. You diversify. Know, you know what I used to call my luxury listings? My bonus check. Your bonus check. If right, because I had it, consistency on the other side. That's what pays the bills. Yeah, man, you close a two yeah. million dollar deal. That's Sixty man. grand, man. That's it. That's a hell of a that's bonus. A great bonus check. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You close a five million dollar deal. Yeah. What? Yeah. Please, all day long, one hundred fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars in the bank, easy peasy. Yeah. You know, um, and and know your market, guys. Like I know that some of the things that are happening right now, whereas uh, uh, people are dropping their commissions on the same token, there are developers paying higher commissions. There are developers selling their own properties, happy to give you a four percent, six percent buyer finder's fee. So go out there and look for those and know your market. If you don't know they exist. You can't show them. Those no. guys are not on the MLS. Right. You know, so know this kind of stuff. You know, mm -hmm. no. I mean, shoot, we got we got high end developments in Miami doing oh, 10 percent, 10 percent. Could you Dang. imagine selling a two million dollar house or a two million Sounds dollar condo at 10 percent? That's insane. That's awesome. Right. That's like what but if they see the that's value about six and, times and, and, and the, the national agents. average of the income <laughs> like in one deal, mm -hmm. you know, um, but no how smarter. Not yeah, harder there, exactly. Right? And I think that there's a lot that goes to marketing appropriately. There is definitely a different type of marketing when it comes to selling a $250,000 home and a $2.5 million sure. house. There's a different level yeah. of marketing. They expect more with print, digital, videos, right, uh, at that price point. 
but look at it as an investment. So if you're investing in a drone video and maybe you're bringing in cars and that kind of stuff, look at that as an investment. That's going to open up further opportunities for you on your other properties. There's a, the greatest athlete of my generation is Michael Jordan. His house has been on the market for over seven years in the Chicagoland market. There's an agent that was the co-listing agent, co-marketing agent out of Beverly Hills, wasn't licensed in Illinois. He's no longer associated with the property. I won't mention his name, but this guy still gets interviewed and he didn't even get the darn thing sold, but it's opened so many opportunities. Yeah, and he was, he was involved. He was involved. He was involved. Yeah. Um, I, I know a few agents in Miami that have had those similar opportunities and and people look at them and they're like, oh, you got lucky, man. No, it was years of hard work, oh, yeah. you know, years oh, yeah, of hard good. work. You know, or easy, and, everybody would do it. And that's the thing with the Bravos right. and, and the million dollar agents, they do make it look a easy, but those are those but, aren't reality but, TV but, shows. Yeah, but read read uh, um, uh, Josh Altman's new book. Okay. And in the very first chapter, he says, you know, yeah, um, you know, on the TV show, somebody's throwing a glass of wine across the room at their opposing realtor and this and that and blah, blah, blah. He's like, but I sold 170 homes last year. You saw 10 of them, right? Yeah. And he's like, this is real life, guys. Yeah. This is real life, yeah. Yeah, you know? So yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's very interesting to be able to hear something like that because you realize that there is a reality to the reality show, sure. right? Uh, so, guys... Don't forget, Michael Lafito is going to be at the Real Talk Looking Conference. Looking forward to it. That's going to be I'm, awesome. I'm pumped He's about got a rock star. T.O. is going to be speaking. T.O. is going to be there, which is going to be great. Marshall Silver is going to be there. For him there. Uh, we're in San Diego right now, Lab Coat Agents, and the guys who run Lab Coat Agents, Nick and Tristan, will be there as well. Yeah. So that's going to be great. They're taking the stage. So Michael Lafito is going to come on the stage, and he's going to talk about uh, how to get into the luxury market, how to appropriately market a luxury home, how to get that luxury listing. So where can they find your book? Uh, so you guys can go to uh, uh, LuxuryListingSpecialistBook.com, LuxuryListingSpecialistBook.com. And uh, we have free content out there as well. So we have a, a, a podcast. You can go to iTunes or Stitcher, Luxury Listing Specialist on iTunes or Stitcher, or just go to LuxuryListingPodcast.com. Awesome, man. Great seeing you guys. As always, thank you for tuning into the show or listening to the show. This show is broadcasted both on YouTube and as well as our podcast. So make sure you listen to the Take Action Podcast with David Kurz. See you guys later. Thank Peace. you, Michael, for joining welcome, us. Brother. Appreciate you All always. Right. See you guys Take in care, October. guys.